successful countries or as having failed thus far to find the proper content and mix of policies, incentives, and institutions. Representative of this intellectual emotional obstacle is the neg negative reception in some Arab circles to the four courageous UN Development Program Arab Human Development Reports, 2002 to 2005. All four focus on the need for cultural change. The 2005 report promotes gender equality. Symptomatic of the multiculturalist environment at the World Bank was an encounter I had after having made a presentation on culture at a World Bank poverty reduction conference a few years ago. I assumed that I had been invited to speak because of the popularity of Culture Matters, co-edited by Samuel Huntington and me at the World Bank bookstore. I had had several prior contacts with the bank that had sensitized me to the institutional hostility to anything that challenged cultural relativism. During the question comment period, an African employee of the bank said, with some fire in her eyes, I thought we had put blaming the victim explanation with the sluggish pace of progress. This is the truth my most recent book. The considerable intelligence, creativity, and dedication of development professionals over the past half century have not succeeded in transforming the large majority of poor authoritarian societies. Where transformations have occurred, they usually have either been nurtured by cultures high in cultural capital, for example, the Confucian societies of East Asia, or have been cases where cultural change that has increased cultural capital has been central to the transformation, for example, Spain, Ireland, and the province of Quebec and Canada. Cultural capital is a set of beliefs, values, and attitudes that drive societies toward the goals of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights. These values, beliefs, and attitudes have been disaggregated in the following typology of progress prone and progress resistant cultures. Number one, please. As we review the typology, it will become apparent how cultural capital powerfully influences human capital and social capital. I might add that I have found a diagram in Gert, Gert Hofstede's book, Culture's Consequences, uh, valuable. It presents the three fundamental forces that motivate human behavior as three slices of a triangle. The base is human nature, the, the apex is individual personality, and in between lies culture. Now let's see how we're going to do this. Okay, take it to here. Stop it right there if you will. Um, in 1999, the Argentine scholar and journalist Mariano Grondona published a book entitled The Cultural Conditions of Economic Development. Grondona is a, a, a columnist for La Nación, a leading Buenos Aires newspaper, a professor of government at the National University of Buenos Aires, and the host of a popular weekly public affairs television show. He is also taught at Harvard. Over several years of thought and observation, Grondona evolved a theory of development that is captured in the type, type, typology of cultural characteristics that contrast cultures that are favorable to economic development, high in cultural capital, with those that resist it, low in cultural capital. I'm going to pause for a moment. You, those of you who will be attending my, my lecture tomorrow will receive copies of this. Uh, okay, you want to move it up, please? It's asking too much to, for you to absorb this, but it will give you some general idea of what we mean by cultural capital. Obviously, the, uh, what you have is 25 factors that are seen very differently in cultures that are prone to progress, high in cultural capital, from those that are uh, resistant to progress, low in cultural capital. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, would you put, we need that now in there. The second table is an assessment of Russia and of several other countries, part of an analysis of 117 countries that list their performance on 10 indicators of progress. Let me tell you what these are. The first one is the United Nations Human Development Report 2007 Index, which combines health, education, and income data. The second are literacy data from the United Nations Human Development Report. The third are female literacy data from the United Nations Human Development Report. The fourth is fertility data from the United Nations Human Development Report 2007. That fertility, of course, is the average number of children born by uh, a woman in a society. The fifth is the Freedom House 2007 survey, which rates countries on political rights and civil liberties. One is the best, seven is the worst. Number six is the date of start of the start of democratic continuity. That's my own analysis. Number seven is per capita GDP, gross domestic product, from the World Bank's World Development Report 2007. Number eight is income distribution, the Gini coefficient, from the World Bank's World Development Report 2007, in which the lower the number, uh, the greater the equitability of income distribution. Number nine is trust from the World Value Survey 2000. Uh, and this is a percent of respondents who believe that people in general can be trusted. And number 10 is Transparency International's Corruption's Perception Index 2007. In, in the last one, the higher is uh, the less corrupt, the, the lower, the more corrupt. Cultural values, beliefs, and attitudes are not in our genes. They are acquired in the home, the school, the church, through the media, peer relationships, and the influence of leaders with a vision, particularly political leaders. The miracle transformations of the 20th century, for example, Turkey after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, South Korea, Spain, and Ireland, have all involved value, attitude, and belief transformations that have increased cultural capital. The Cultural Change Institute was established at the Fletcher School at Tufts University in 2007 to promote cultural capital through research, pilot projects, and technical assistance in contexts as varied as Costa Rica, Timor-Leste, Iran, and the state of California. These and other Cultural Change Act Institute activities include modifications to traditional child-rearing practices educational and religious reform that emphasizes democratic behavior, social justice, and creativity, the role of the media in the promotion of cultural capital, and the use of cultural analysis to improve business performance. Culture matters, culture changes. Efforts to enhance cultural capital by political, religious, intellectual, media, and business leaders can accelerate progress toward the three goals of the UN Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that is, democratic governance, social justice, above all respect with, with respect to health and education, and an end to poverty. Thank you. That's all I've got to say.